Well, after a really nice, but unfortunately really short stay compared to what we would have liked, it is time for Olo to shove off from the Florida Keys. So we're leaving Marathon. We're gonna head out offshore in the Hawks Channel and uh, head up the coast. First stop, Miami. Gonna anchor out for the night. Let's go boating. All right, we took our walk, Jasper. You ready to get back in the boat? Boat's lit up. Engines are gonna be lit up soon. Come on, buddy. Let's go, we got a lot to do before we get out of here. Got a lot of lines to take off and stairs. The captain's busy. All right, so yesterday, last couple days actually, we went through all of our pre-departure plans. Just make sure everything is where it needs to be. Going into our pre-startup. On our checklist, engine lights are on. That helps with our engine room cameras, among other things. Get the engine room cameras fired up. Turn off our engine preheaters. Even when it's warm, we heat them up because it's good to get rid of some of the condensation. Our nav suite is on. Our first route is going to be uh, Bonefish to Rodriguez. So I plug that in, navigate forward, showing us 40 nautical miles. Uh, our VHF radios, we will fire up. Got to get my iPads configured, a couple of programs we run on those, and make sure our stabilizer power is on. Then we'll get our generator going, disconnect our shore power, and move over to the generator for our ship's power. And then we'll be closer to getting out of here. Okay, next order of business, starting the generator. After having a clogged strainer the last time we went out for our sea trial last week, uh, hopefully everything is resolved. But Preheat our generator for about 10 seconds, and then we crank her up. And she's gonna be running for really the next, oh, almost 30 hours or so. And there we go. Coming online, pressure's good. First thing, of course, we do is shed the major loads, which on our boat is the air conditioning. We shed our hot water heater, so that way when we turn the system back on a generator, it's not all Pop it on at once, leg two, leg one, off. Switch over to Jen. We're showing a full 220 volts. I hear my battery backup for my router going. And Olo is back online. And the air conditioners have soft start, so they're all not going to crank up at the same time, which is good. Yeah. Power's off. So is this going to be a little challenging? Yeah, it's going to be a little challenging. We have the wind pushing us off the dock pretty, pretty strongly. Um, we just have to find a place that we can do a, a tie where we can do a quick, quick release. And uh, it's difficult because there aren't cleats and the pilings aren't exactly in the right place. Testing. The stern line is going to be important because uh, the back of the boat's being blown off. Okay. The bow seems to be okay. Once we get the steps in, we can figure out what to do next. Okay, all right, cranking them up. Starboard engine coming online. Water flow's good, pressure's good, looking nice. All right, here comes port. And pressure's up. Right here. And with the help of our friend and dockmate Art handling our bow line, we were off. Bye bye, Marathon. It was a lot of fun. It was way too short. Here's to a good journey. We are off. First stop, Miami.
Yeah, so we are back on the water. We've now been underway for about 21.1 nautical miles. Uh, we left at 7 a.m. We were up at 6. Well, I was up at 5.17. But we have been underway now for about two and a half hours. And it's our first day back on the water for what will be an extended journey as we work our way up the East Coast. We're on our way to Miami right now. We have a course plotted into Rodriguez Key, which is an anchorage where we could potentially stop and drop the hook if we needed to. And from there to Miami is about another 40 miles. We're about, I don't know, a mile and a half off of the coast of Indian Key. And what about this weather today? Pretty much as predicted, right? Yep. Tim, this is now the disembodied voice of Admiral Tim. I'm not saying anything. You don't have to say anything. Okay. I was just going to get your take on the weather. Uh, well, it's sunny and windy. It's hot. And it's hot. The wind as predicted blowing out of the east at about 12 knots probably. And for, for the beginning of the ride, we had two and three footers pretty close together, which made for a wet ride. You know, it's so funny. We spent all this time getting the boat nice and clean, polishing our uh, clear strata glass up on the bridge deck, only to pull right out and have salt everywhere. It is a salty ride vice, as we say. It's perfectly fine. Jasper doesn't love it when the boat pitches a lot. He has settled in nicely, finally. And it's gonna be a great day. And it's only supposed to get better and calm. And what this really sets us up for is a really calm offshore day tomorrow when we go between Miami and Palm Beach. We're on our way to a great anchorage tonight. It's actually super cool. We've done it once before and we can't wait to show it to you. Cruising along at about 1200 RPM. We've been making between eight and a half and almost 10 knots, but we've had the wind in our face and we've had the current going against us. The current is going to shift and the winds are gonna calm down. So that should all work in our favor. And Olo is running wonderfully. Wouldn't wanna be out here today in a boat that didn't have good working stabilizers. Indeed. So, <laughs> that's yeah. a good thing. And we will press on. It's time. I think it's time for you to get that uh yeah, we took a lot of salt spray. Windshield cleared so, off. However, uh, you better wait. Oh, look at that. Because we're probably going to get a little rocky rolly. Yeah, stabilizers will handle it. That is a sport fish named Badakadunk. That is the sport fish Badakadunk right there. Slicing through. I wonder why he didn't get a little closer to us. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know it's not a lot of room. Everybody out. wants to stay on their root line. Not a lot of room out here on the big bad ocean. Hey, about to get on. How are you? Nice to see you. All right, time to clean the window. Now, well, we'll see if it. Gets we'll see what clean. happens. So, we have a hose and fresh water wash down up on our foredeck, but the pressure for this particular spot is never fantastic. It's okay. It's not fantastic. We'll give it a try. You're a hoser. I am a hoser. Underneath the bench is a fresh water. Pose. Well, hopefully you can hear me. It's salty and I'm getting sprayed. I personally don't know if there is going to be enough pressure in that hose to reach the clear. But who knows? It's kind of weeny. Okay, let's get wet. All right. That's it. Yeah, so this is our midday report or late morning report. We've been underway now for about four and a half hours and you would think that we'd be at least halfway, right? But we're not, quite. About five more miles. We've been underway for about 41 nautical miles. We just are rounding Key Largo, going through the John Pennycamp Coral Reef State Park. Boat's running great, and finally things really laid down, as you can see. It's a, a whole lot calmer. It was, it was not uncomfortable. It was just a little wet, and we were rocking a little bit, but the stabilizers did a good job. We have seen virtually no boat traffic until we got to the Key Largo area. We're seeing a couple of yachts. Look at this guy in 11 feet of water and clearly stirring up the bottom. I don't think he's touching the bottom, but he's stirring it up. And then this catamaran, look at him towing two wave runners. I have to say we've never seen that before. So what we surmise is a lot of people cross from the Bahamas this morning because it really is the first window. We're gonna see a lot of Bahamas traffic inbound as we travel over these next couple of days. 
But it's going well. Jasper, as you can see, is still relaxing and we are uh, having a nice ride. Still cruising along right around 10 knots. The current is no longer opposing us. The wind's not in our face. We did switch our route. We had been following a route to Rodriguez Key and we're not stopping to anchor there. So we then continued on. Our next route is directly to Miami and we're going to go in by Stiltsville, which is really cool, and into Biscayne Bay and up to uh, Marine Stadium, which is a nice protected anchorage. And that'll set us up nicely for leaving through Government Cut in Miami in the morning to get up to Palm Beach. And we can happily report that we saw three dolphins who joined us for the ride for a little bit. Happy Captain, first underway lunch. And I mean, come on. This is a fresh tomato with basil. I'm trying to remember this now. Basil, burrata cheese, uh, truffle oil, and a little smoked salt. Right? That is Is that right? Bad. Okay. And now we have a sweated fennel tart. Yes, with? Uh, that has some uh, Key West pinks. That's correct. Um, and what, what's on it? That's what's on it. That's what's on it. Yeah. At the uh, I mean, come on. All from the ad. Thank no. you, Adam. Yeah. Bon appetit. Thank you. What is happening? So, Susan is a woman who we met and uh, sort of became friends with. We met them in Stock Island and she built an outer reef, which I was at the christening with. This is her new bigger outer reef and here they come. We saw them on AIS so we thought we'd say hi. Did you know who that was? He met them. Uh, Jasper met Island. them. Yeah, at Stock Island. You little social butterfly. You little social butterfly. If you'd like more real-time updates on our adventures, well, you'll find us on Instagram and also on Facebook. There's also lots more on our website, and if you ever have any questions, please don't hesitate to leave them here in the comments section or reach out on one of our other platforms. We'd love to hear from you. So, we've now been underway 8 hours, 22 minutes. Let me just peek behind you there. We have traveled 78.2 nautical miles. I'm always looking. We have our little Garmin inReach, which is the easiest way for me to see how far we've traveled since the day started. We are just turning off of the ocean for the first time and leaving the outside to head through Biscayne Channel, which goes by Stiltsville. So it's pretty exciting. Everything has been going really well. We've had a really interesting day. It's been a long day and we're ready to get uh, safely anchored at Marine Stadium. But this, for deeper draft boats, rather than go north all the way to Government Cut in Miami, this is how we go in. It's sort of the way that makes the most sense when you're coming from the Hawk Channel, heading north to Miami. So uh, let's check out Stiltsville. So we are coming up on the iconic Stiltsville. Wooden house is built on stilts um, that now sit in the uh, Biscayne National Park an incredible part of the history of Miami. It started back in the 20s and by 22 there were about 12 stilt homes out here. One of the notable homes that was built in the early 30s, I think it was around 33, was by Crawfish Eddie Walker. Crawfish Eddie Walker supposedly wanted to get away from Miami so that they could gamble and about a mile offshore it was legal. So he came out here, built a place, uh, he sold bait and beer, and he sold crawfish chowder, which he made, that he said, from the crawfish that he caught underneath his house. There was a social club that started here in the 30s as well, and that was the beginning of a really momentous period for Stiltsville. Once through the Biscayne Channel and in Biscayne Bay, you turn to the north with direct heading to the William Powell Bridge, which brings the Rickenbacker Causeway from Miami to Virginia Key. And that is where the Marine Stadium Anchorage is located. To get to Marine Stadium, you turn to the east-northeast just after you clear the bridge and head towards the small island that marks the entrance to the anchorage. As we mentioned earlier, we had a great experience the one other time we dropped the hook here, which was around the same time of year and on a Tuesday night. It was super quiet with only a few other boats there that night. Being a Wednesday and not a holiday, we assumed that we'd have a pretty similar experience this time around. Wow, were we wrong. So 
here we are, we're at the Anchorage. It is really packed and we are trying to find a, a spot where we will have enough room to let out about 70 feet of road. You can see it is a busy, chaotic afternoon. So are we gonna drop this anchor? Yeah, let's drop it. Okay. To be clear, we do get that in some anchorages, there's lots of chaos. Loud partying is the norm and that if we don't like it, we can go somewhere else. Got it. Unfortunately, Miami doesn't have a lot of good choices when it comes to finding a protected anchorage where we can easily land with Jasper, and it's not even particularly easy landing here. But it was late in the day, we were tired, and we just wanted to stop. So, as they say, it was what it was. So we spent our time there listening to everyone else's music at loud levels while watching boats coming and going late into the night, with many coming precariously close to us and our anchor chain. As we launch the One Love, you'll get a sense of just how loud the music was by keeping in mind that none of what you're hearing was coming from our boat. That is one patient dog right there. Jasper was happy to be able to see the local crew team practicing on his way to shore, so there's that. Okay, this is the landing now. There is no flotation device that was attached to this that we used to be able to get out and get him on. So we're just going to tie up to the wall, and I'm going to have to lift him up. Okay, Captain, uh, we are aboard, and we are headed back to the vessel. Roger that. We will be here to receive. If you watch us regularly, you won't be surprised to know that we always stay in radio contact when one of us is out on the tender. It's just a good idea. Derelict. Uh, you think these guys were partying a bit too hard? Look at this. These guys just motoring through. I'm sure you can hear the music maybe even louder than us. The anchorage is, is chaos. Um, we're having a very light cocktail so we yeah. can keep our wits about us. But it is our arrival cocktail. We made it here. Yeah, it was a good long run of a day. And this guy's going to try to drop an anchor right on top by of our anchor. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Perfect. It's all Cheers. part of the boating it's good being excitement. Back. It is. 747. The sun has set. The, sun has set. the chaos ensues. The chaos ensues. Everybody's having fun. They just keep arriving. And here comes the Tiki Opa. <laughs> that little comic leaf. Wait, that can't possibly be yet another boat full of people coming in. Can it? <laughs> well, of course it can. Wow. Unbelievable. Look at the Rickenbacker Causeway and how cool that looks. So this guy, <laughs> he's been trying to uh, catch his anchor, but he's not letting out enough chain or rope. I don't even think the thing's touching the bottom. Line. And he just keeps backing up until he got between all those other boats. So now he's going to pull ahead and start again. Okay, this is your evening update. It's 8.23. <laughs> and it's really calmed down. Okay, not really. I mean, it's a hell of a view. It's 10 o'clock at night. We just got back from walking Jasper. Hey, guess what? It's not quiet here. Something that bears repeating. Our frustration wasn't with the fact that people come here to party and party loudly. That is clearly the norm here, so more power to them. It just wasn't our expectation based on our own prior experience. Hey, we learn something new every day on the water, and this was today's lesson. What will tomorrow's be? Be sure to join us for our next video to find out. If you're not a subscriber, we'd love to have you. We always appreciate a like, and yes, if you whack that notification bell, you will be the first on board for the next Adventures of Ola.